I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thanks for joining once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we go back to our Microsoft Access playlist and we're gonna take another look at data macros. And in this episode, what I wanna show is how to log changes to a single field in Microsoft Access in a table uh, using data macros. Now, as you might remember, data macros are not the same as your VBA programming in the front end, uh, and data macros are very, very handy because they will fire whether or not you're using an access front end or a .NET front end or whatever. Um, data macros are kind of like the back end scripting language for the ACE uh, database engine. Let's get to it. Want to download files that are used in this episode? Make sure to check out my downloads page. The link is in the description. Okay, so this is a question that I get asked a lot, actually. Uh, people have a need for this, and it's very important to be able to log a change to a single field in your database. It doesn't matter what you do, uh, what database you're working on, uh, you're eventually going to run into this issue. And uh, in this case, we want to take those prices that you see on the right there. I've got a table with some vehicles in it and every time that price changes I want to log that price change. I want to get the vehicle ID, the price that it was set to and I'm going to set the date stamp on that as well uh, so that I can uh, you know, have a running log of what happened there. And so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go up into the table tools and the table ribbon and we'll go ahead and we'll take that after update event there. So you can see that it says TBL vehicle and after update, and this is where we get started. And so the first thing we're going to add is we're gonna choose if from the selections, and then we're gonna put that updated function in there, and I'm gonna put in the name of the field that I want to log changes to. Now make sure you put in your double quotes for the name. The, it won't work if you use the uh, square brackets in some cases. And then we'll go ahead and we're gonna use that uh, set local variable uh, command. And you'll notice that I've chosen it uh, inside of the block that the updated vehicle price is in. So just make sure that you uh, put it inside of that block. And we're gonna make a name for our our variable, it's a local variable um, that's running on ACE and it's going to be v uh, vehicle ID, so V-E-H-I-D and we're going to uh, take the expression equals vehicle ID in square brackets meaning get the value from the table for vehicle ID. And so we're going to get that variable and then we're going to do the same thing, we're going to grab a local variable we're going to fill in VEH price for vehicle price and then we'll do the same thing. We're going to grab the sort of like the new value for that vehicle price and we're going to store it in a variable so that we can use it a little bit later here. And so there we go. We've got our uh, local variable for vehicle price. We've made it VEH price. Now notice I did not put any any quotes around that and I did not put any square brackets around the names of the variables. However, uh, that's only when you create them. You do need to add the square brackets later when you call the actual uh, value. So we'll move on here and what we're doing here is the next thing we're going to do is inside of this uh, block is we're going to create a record in and of course we're going to choose table price history because that's the, the uh, table that we want to log it in. And now what we can do is we can uh, choose set field and set field will set the field value uh, to whatever you want to set as we create a new record in here. And so I'm going to choose vehicle ID and, uh, and then I'll set the value of the vehicle ID field equal to our variable that we set, uh, VEH ID that you can see there. Um, and you'll note that now I've put VHID in square brackets. So make sure you pay attention to how you use the quotes, no quotes, and your square brackets because it is important and it's quite finicky. 
So the first uh, field that we set was uh, vehicle ID. The second field that we're going to set is, of course, the vehicle price, which we're going to save. And we're going to log that price change. Uh, and, and you can see now we've got that um, set up there. We've put the VEH price uh, variable, the value for that, into the vehicle price field. And then our last uh, set field that we'll, we're going to do here, we're going to set the date stamp. And we're going to set that equal to now, which is actually, it's a function, a built-in function that you can use with data macros and it'll grab the current date time. And so now we've set the vehicle ID, the vehicle price, and the date stamp. And that's exactly what we want to do. And our macro is pretty much done there. And so now you can see there's our completed block. If I click inside of the if updated, you can see that the rest of it highlights with that light gray. And that means that all of those are, are uh, combined together and they're going to be executed in order. And we'll close that and then we'll say yes to save it. And now what we can do is we can just go straight to our table. We don't, we don't have to refresh it or anything. Uh, we can go ahead and just change a value in the open table. And I'll change our Corolla price and I'll change our, our Mercedes price. And, and then uh, we can go take a look and see in our TBL price history we can see now there's two entries in here and we've got vehicle ID two and three and there are the prices that were associated with those two vehicles. And here's the, the timestamp that uh, we had for um, the timing of the change. And so this is very, very handy. Many people ask for this. Uh, if I go and I change just the vehicle color to blue and I tab off of that record, meaning it got updated, and I open price history, you'll notice there's no change here. And that's because we only made the change if the price field was updated. And that's very, very handy. That's exactly what we want to see there. Um, so we've got our uh, TBL vehicle and uh, we can log our changes to prices, uh, even if we go down to one penny and, and tab off of that record that's been updated. And if we go and take a look at our price history, you can see there it is. Um, there's a new record for vehicle ID one, and it's got uh, the new price in there. That's exactly what we wanted to see there. Now we can also go, uh, if you want an alternate way to get to the after update. So this is how we got to it with the table just open in data sheet view, but if, if we say we were in design view, we can also look for the, uh, you know, under table design, we can find the create data macros uh, uh, option on the ribbon. And you can see there's after update and you can see it's indented on, on the uh, drop down there. And so we can go to, to the design of it from there as well, which is an op optional alternative way for you to go and use your data macros. And that's how you can log changes to one field using a data macro in Access. Looking for additional resources for your project? Make sure to check out the additional links in the description.